This is Alan Karchmer. The National Building Museum recently produced a retrospective exhibition featuring my photography, which was scheduled to open on March 13, 2020, the very day that museums in Washington, D.C. and across the United States were forced to close due to the coronavirus pandemic. While waiting until it can safely reopen, the museum asked me to create a series of commentaries reflecting on some of the photographs in the exhibition. We invite you to this virtual gallery talk and hope you will visit the museum and the exhibition when it reopens. Early on, I was living in New Orleans and became fascinated by the way raking light revealed texture in the uneven surfaces of stucco walls. I discovered this brief moment when the light is moving onto a surface and made photographs which, while interesting, lacked context or meaning. I wanted to add another aspect of life, so I would compose a shot at a prescribed time and wait for people to walk by, as in this early image from 1977. I advanced to shooting with a 4x5 view camera, which encouraged more careful study of composition, as in this image with a nun passing between a pair of shuttered doorways. A few years later, I had an assignment in San Francisco and made this photograph, using a car entering the frame to animate an urban still life. Looking back, I realized that, from the beginning, communicating human interaction with architecture was something I valued. There's a kind of dance that plays out when finding and refining where exactly to place the camera and how to frame the image. There's an interplay between the form itself, the angle best suited to render it, and surrounding elements that provide context, foreground, and background. With this photograph of Tanglewood House II by Short Silver Architects, I wanted to emphasize the structure's dramatic cantilever projecting into space. If I'd been closer with a wider lens, the form would have been exaggerated to the point of distortion. Farther away, the effect of foreshortening would have compressed the building's volume and minimized the effect. What you see is from what I considered the perfect spot. The tall wildflowers and shadows in the foreground lead into the composition and emphasize depth of space, which is further reinforced by the weight of richly textured clouds. I observed their direction of movement and waited for the darker ones at upper left to move into the frame. The combined effect captures the spirit of this design, which is at once vigorous and tranquil. When photographing the Auditorio de Tenerife in the Canary Islands for Santiago Calatrava, I wanted to get an image that showed the building in context with the greater landscape from an angle that highlighted the profile of the curving concrete shells. I found the perfect vantage point around a bend in the harbor. Using a long lens from a distance, the structure becomes an element of the landscape rather than an object in it. I determined the ideal time to get the photograph, and when we arrived, the light was perfect, but the dramatic sky that makes this image so strong was changing so fast I had to act quickly before this was lost. I raced to set up the camera and got a couple of exposures, but before I could get any more as backup in case of error, the clouds had moved, blocking the sun, and the effect was entirely different, as you see here. It's important to know where to be and when to be there but luck plays a tremendous role in making or breaking a photograph. Chateau Lacoste is a vineyard in Provence that's been developed into an art center with a collection of buildings and outdoor sculptures by some of the great architects and artists of our time. I've been photographing there with Sandra Banadam since 2014 for a book. While it takes a large collection of images to illustrate its scale and context and the individual works, one hopes that among these a photograph will emerge that distills the overarching spirit of this remarkable place. Consider this image at the entrance to Architect Tadao Ando's Visitor Center. The elemental geometric shapes of the rectangular portal and circular oculus dominate a minimalist composition while the complexity of the ensemble of parts framed in this view, punctuated by the monolith at the end of the path with mountains beyond, speaks to the harmony of the designed and natural landscape. This form and substance, captured in the region's distinct quality of light, characterize the essence of this place. Henri Cartier-Bresson's concept of the decisive moment is typically thought to apply to photojournalism, but there are instances in photographing architecture that it's also relevant. 
In his design for the Oculus at the World Trade Center Transportation Hub, Santiago Calatrava rotated the building's orientation slightly away from the grid of the street, as you can see in this photograph. So the skylight that runs along its axis aligns with the sun on the morning of September 11th. Every year, and on that day only, during the time corresponding to that of the terrorist attack, the glass enclosure is open to the sky. When he asked me to photograph there on that day in 2016, the first time this was to happen, I thought about how to impart this meaning in a photograph and decided to shoot into the sun, having the source of light itself visible in the image. The transformation of the space by this symbolic gesture is visceral, and I hope the profound power of the moment comes through in the photograph. A series of images can work together to tell the story of a complex building, as you can see here with just a few of my photographs of the National Museum of African American History and Culture, designed by Freelon Ajay Bond Smith Group. Sometimes particular images engage to create a kind of visual dialogue, and I found that to be the case with this pair of photographs. The landmark building is defined by its corona, a filigreed screen inspired by ironwork crafted by enslaved Africans that surrounds the exterior. The photo on the right shows the corona glowing in the rich, warm color of late afternoon light. The photograph on the left takes us inside with the pattern of the corona projected onto the interior walls. Viewed together, the photographs show cause and effect. A physicist would explain that light is not matter. But here, these photographs demonstrate how architectural form gives material substance to the intangible medium of light. In 2004, I was commissioned by Santiago Calatrava to photograph three bridges over the Hoofdvaart Canal in this quintessentially Dutch landscape. They're known as the harp, lute, and zither, after musical instruments that inspired their design. Each is a deftly sketched variation on a structural theme. I made this photograph of the harp bridge in the first days of the session with the kind of light we know well in paintings by the Dutch masters, raking across a field of barley, illuminating the bridge beyond. Days later, when I saw a storm approaching, I returned to make this photograph with the diffused light and animated sky that you see here. The motion of the clouds and trees bending in the wind is a counterpoint to the static tension in the structure of the bridge. In this light, Against the background of dark, ominous clouds, the delicate equilibrium of forces in the bridge is clearly revealed. Reflecting on this later, I came to see that here, in this moment, the structural roles appear reversed. One might think it is the mast poised in space that is being held in suspension by the span. When architects use photographs to present their work, the images are often tailored to serve a very specific narrative which articulates how the design accommodates the building's function, as we see here in my photographs of Buckingham School by VMDO Architects. The photo session was carefully planned to cover all of the images needed to tell a complex story, but while working in such a structured way, it's important to keep an eye out for things you don't expect. For the photograph you see here, we arrived before dawn to get one last shot and were packing up to leave when I saw something happening with the light that became this photograph, with the rising sun streaming through the portal under a bridge that connects two wings of the building. This low raking light is fleeting, and with minutes to spare before it was lost, I quickly framed the shot and asked a couple of people to walk into the scene to bring a sense of life and activity. The urgency of the moment is a powerful force that focuses one's ability to make decisions quickly. It's important to be open to the unexpected and prepared to act when opportunity strikes. When planning the exhibition at National Building Museum with curator Martin Muller, I was pleased with his enthusiasm for including some of my personal photographs to explore common threads that run between them and my commissioned work. I have a long-standing interest in viewing the city as living history, a visual record of the evolution of human culture, as in this photograph from Moscow where consumer advertising now shares the stage with the fathers of Soviet communism. 
This wall in Syracuse, Sicily is a palimpsest, its layers revealing eras of human history with stark and accessible clarity. Originally built as the Temple of Athena by the Greeks, the structure was appropriated as a church by the early Christians and as a mosque during the Arab conquest. Its massive Doric columns partly absorbed into the walls of what is now the Duomo of Syracuse. By including passersby in modern dress and the ubiquitous image of the day, someone snapping a photo with a camera phone, this photograph presents a moment in time that unites the age of the Greeks with the present. The Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge in Dallas was designed by Santiago Calatrava to be a landmark. The series of photographs I produced illustrates aspects of design such as structural concept and detailing, but above all, I found it important to show its place in the context of the city. To complement this view from across the Trinity River that shows its prominence among other players in the urban skyline, I wanted a photograph that more narrowly focused on the bridge itself. To achieve this, I needed distance and height. I arrived in Dallas before the bridge was open to traffic and walked onto the roadway to spot a vantage point in this building circled here, from which the bridge would be framed between a pair of office towers. With a little sleuthing and persuasion, I arranged access at the appropriate time. This is the view from that spot. Made at dusk, the streams of light from cars moving during the long exposure define the curving network of roadways that lead to the bridge. The setting is clearly urban, with the bridge assuming a heroic and dominant presence. Form, structure, place, and dynamic graphic composition come together in a single image. The towers in these photographs were designed by John Haydick, never realized during his life, and built as a memorial after his death in 2000. Appropriate to the spiritual character of this work, at daybreak, these mystical structures were shrouded in fog, the ethereal light beginning to clear as I was ready to make this image the first shot. Set on what was then being built as the city of culture in Santiago de Compostela, Spain, the site preparations for Peter Eisenman's complex of buildings had just been completed, and the raw earth provided an otherworldly setting well suited to the poetic symbolism in Haydick's last work. My favorite photograph here was made with a long lens from a distance. The contrasting profiles of the stone and glass towers rise from the sculpted earth, standing before successive waves of mountains receding to the horizon. This photograph resonates with the sense of timelessness present in these forms and in the landscape. The National Memorial for Peace and Justice in Montgomery, Alabama is the nation's first memorial dedicated to those terrorized by the crimes of lynching in America. Created by the Equal Justice Initiative and Mass Design Group, it's rich with meaning that makes the extent and horror of this terrible legacy palpable. As with all commissions, I was anxious about the weather conditions I would encounter during the session, which affects the quality of light and plays such an important role in the character of the images. A hurricane was making its way across the Gulf of Mexico and passed through the area as I was arriving. While clear sunlight is often desirable to accentuate texture and materials and provide shadows and contrast to define form, and I did have that eventually for some of the photographs, the diffused light seen here reinforces the rich palette of colors while the ponderous clouds are a perfect metaphor for the profound meaning in the memorial. The cumulative effect of these forces coming together makes a photograph that conveys the most ineffable aspect of design, spirit of place.